So today I'm getting around removal heavy decks with Relentless Rats, Hungry Horrors and Chunky Llamas, plus my secret card no one plays that always wins me the game. Hey everyone, Hex here and today I'm mostly creating, not casting my creatures. We win hard and fast, then finish them off with an army of rats and one very strong llama. So let's jump straight into the deck and the non-creature permanents your opponents will struggle to stay on top of. I've got Forge, it's gotta be my most played card ever. This card puts in some serious work with its relentless assault at your opponent's life total, even if the creatures die at the end of turn. Wedding announcement, almost as good though slightly weaker, but our deck today revels in its anthem effect when it transforms, and I have Skrelv's Hive. Now I've never been overly keen on this card, but in this deck we get to eke out so much more value than just a tiny 1-1 that can't block. It is our perfect 2 drop today. So how we leverage our tokens is how we ultimately win. We've got War Leader's Call, a total given in this deck as an anthem effect that doubles as a pinging machine. It closes out so many games before our opponents can do anything about it. I've got my old friend in King Darien, which is another anthem effect and can help protect our tokens late on from removal. And finally, Pollen Shield Hair. It's a decent two drop, it's a token lord, and it pumps our creatures late on. It curves out nice for us and can squeeze out extra damage if the forge is in play. I'm playing the ever impressive Sanguine Evangelist. It makes a flyer as it ETBs and dies, and has a battle cry, particularly good to close out games got Lunar Veteran as a one drop and my secret source for this deck, so don't tell anyone, but it's Song of Tottentans. For X and a red, you make X 1-1 one, one rats that can't block. All your creatures also get haste that turn too. So with War Leader's Call, a transformed wedding announcement or good old King Darien out, that is a lot of hasty damage and I do mean a lot out of nowhere. No one expects it and it literally wins me most of my games today. Removal wise, we have Witch Stalker's Frenzy and Case of the Gateway Express, which also in turn becomes a small semi anthem effect. 25 lands, including one very strong llama in disguise, and that is today's deck. So I've been playing this deck for a while off camera and have experimented with Mondrak, Rabble Rousing, Planeswalkers, and all sorts of other cards, but a lot of those cards I felt were a little bit win more. I love where this deck is right now and it seems to work perfect for me, so I decided to bring it out of hiding and show everybody. It wins a lot of games with rats and llamas, a phrase I never thought I'd say. So I hope you like this one too. Let me know in the comments below, give the video a like, and if you haven't yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. Your support means the world to this channel and I will speak to you again in the next video. All right then, on the draw, and the hand is fine. Um, three three drops isn't ideal, but such is life. What are we gonna do about it? I don't really want a mulligan, and we get to play our thicket here on turn one. So this is the deck that I play when I'm not recording content for YouTube, but today I thought I'm going to show the world what I do play with, because I think this deck is really strong. There are many ways to deal with enchantments and artifacts going around, but if your opponent doesn't have them in their deck, they're gonna to struggle to deal with this deck and also they're gonna need multiple ways to deal with enchantments and artifacts. We'll drop the War Leader's Call here though and we can start leveraging our creature creation going on. The opponent though is on Orzov and an ambitious farmhand into Massacre Girl. And we get to double spell here with the Veteran. Nice little way to keep us in the game as long as possible. And let's go for the most mana efficient play in a wedding announcement. Ping the opponent here and we make a 2-2. So I, oh Lauren, yeah, I was going to say white and black does have ways to deal with enchantments. Lauren is a pretty nice way to deal with our war leader's call there. But also we're not playing too much removal in this deck. I've been playing this deck for a while and I'm limiting the removal thinking that we can just sort of go over the top of their creatures. There is a small bit of removal in the deck and we did draw one there in case of the Gateway Express, but that currently can only do two damage. We'll drop the Skrelv's Hive here and might as well a double spell with a King Darium. And I guess we've got a little attack here and we a cheeky little attack with this 2-2. I'm not gonna be blocking Massacre Girl anytime soon. They could block with Lauren if they want to, but they don't, they go for Elsbeth Smite to a nab our attacking creature, okay. Didn't expect them to have that card, but not a problem too much because Scruff's Hive can make a 
fourth creature next turn and then case the gateway express can nab the massacre girl but i'm probably going to go after adeline now to be honest and also our ganjo in our hand can deal with massacre girl next turn but adeline's going to be more of a problem than uh, we need because it is going to have a large toughness for us to have to get through so we get to make a fourth creature here and the card we draw is a sundown pass all right well let's just case this adeline that this is kind of risky if they have a removal spell on one of our creatures um could go for massacre girl but i think adeline is gonna get out of control pretty quickly so we will deal with that. I guess we could have also made a Mirex token in response if they went to kill one of our creatures there. And I'm not going to attack. I'm not going to solve my case just yet. Because I want to make a, another token and then flip our wedding announcement into wedding festivity. So they may well have a board wipe. They may find one over the next couple of turns. And if they do, then so be it. But this is where we are. And they find an art priest priest of shadows. Unfortunately, Massacre Girl now a 5-5. So a Ganjo wouldn't be too great, even though I still probably would have double blocked. But they don't attack. Okay. Alright, well we'll make a Mirex token, which comes down as a 3-3. So there's loads of anthem effects in our deck that we could draw now to uh, win the game this turn, really. And we draw. Song of Tottentans. Now, I am hope I'm saying that right, but this card is unreal in this exact situation. So we can do X equals six. And yeah, this should be game over because they are tapped out. This is going to produce six three threes, gain a six life. So if we had the war leaders call, that would have pinged the opponent as well for another six. But yeah, we can just attack. I'm just doing the math here. I think we have lethal with everything. Um, don't need to attack with King Darien. This is more than enough damage. Doesn't matter how they block. I'm pretty sure they're going to die. I don't really want to lose my King Darien, but they're dead anyway. I know they are. I can count already here. They're going to go down to minus three, I think. So, yeah, I think we've got them. That was a good little top deck there. Minus four. Good little top deck there, but um, there was many cards we could have uh, won us the game there. All right, then, on the play. And this hand isn't great. We have one land, and it's tapped. Uh, second hand isn't particularly great either, but we can put one of these frenzies to the bottom and uh, drop our Restless Prairie. A 3-3 three, three Llama that when it attacks it boosts all your other creatures. So pretty nice card in our deck here. And let's play the untapped land and get the hair down here. This hair is a 2-2. Two, two. That is a Lord effect for tokens. Ideally you want to be playing this a little bit later in the game. But why not drop it on turn 2 if you can. And opponent has play with fire anyway. But that's fine. That is a play with fire not coming out of our face or one of our other creatures. Gets us a chance to drop our war leader's call. So we're going to need some juice. We're going to need some gas. One of our enchantments that or artifacts that creates creatures. Opponent with a stomper. So looks like some kind of ramp deck. We find a mountain. And right on cue, we draw our Urbrask's Forge. It's nice. It's going to do three damage this turn. Forge and war leader's call is a marriage made in heaven. You get the ping when the creature ETBs. You then get to do an extra damage because it is a Lord effect, an Anthem effect. And we have our Frenzy as well in case they want to play some big creature. So I kind of like where we are right now. And that is a big creature in Vorinclex. Okay, well... Okay, another Forge. I mean, that's interesting because the opponent does not believe we have removal, I would have thought. So let's drop this forge, attack with both. They're clearly going to block one of these with Vorinclex and we're just going to uh, take out the Vorinclex with the other Frenzy. Yeah, exactly as predicted. We will take care of Vorinclex here and we even get to attack with Trample Damage for two extra. So yeah, really nice turn for us there. So yeah, I mean, we're in a really strong position. They're going to need a way to deal with our artifacts pretty quickly. 
Zeus's many journey, not particularly great this turn. Although next turn it gains them three life. So yeah, I mean we are well, another Song of Tottenzans away from winning this game. Opponent with a Scrap Gorger. And another journey, okay. All right, so they're gonna gain six life next turn. We need to do what we can to try and win the game this turn. Okay, well, a tap land is not great. Kind of um, puts us in a situation where we're just gonna attack with everything, including our Llama. So a few little pings here, opponents on nine, boost the team, and yeah, they're gonna lose their board here. They have to, because this is nine damage. They don't block and they, uh, they take it all and die. All right then, on the draw, and I love our hand here. It's really sweet. We hope to resolve this War Leader's Call because Song of Totten's Ends and War Leader's Call is pretty nice, including the Skrelf's Hive here. A card I'm not particularly keen on, but I think in our deck today, it does more than just create an, um, a creature that can't block. And I'm not a big fan of creatures that can't block at all. Um, opponent with a Phyrexian Arena, so hopefully they can start doing a bit of damage themselves for us. Don't want to see a shield rid now though. That would be probably the worst card for us to see. Even though we can attack around it, the life gain would be the biggest problem for us. But they are... Okay, they've gone for Jace. Okay. Okay, they've gone to target our might here. So we've got a couple of options here. We, we're going to kill Jace. Song of Tottenzans, Tottentans, sorry if I keep saying that wrong, is going to create three 2-2s, two but it's also going to give our 2-2 two -two on the battlefield haste. Um, you can also play Song of Tottentans for X equals zero and play something like an Evangelist if you wanted to. But I think the best thing to do is just play the rats. And opponent may have a board wipe, but we're going to keep making creatures every turn. The Evangelist would have been nice if they do have a board wipe, because we could have maybe kept a bat on the battlefield. We'll see how this one goes, but if they're playing Jace, they're on some kind of Esper control deck. And they are not playing a card. So it's pointing towards a instant speed spell or a counter spell. And Sokanzan is a great card here to get around counter magic, so we'll play this. This is a lethal attack. This is more than lethal, as we're making two pings there from War Leader's Call. And yeah, straight at the opponent, and to be honest, I don't know what they can do. The Wandering Emperor... I don't think that's going to save them. So they go on to 11, but we're still attacking with 12. Yep, and opponent is dead. Very quick. Alright then, on the draw here... Another pretty nice hand for us. I love any hand with the Urobrasks Forge. And even though the Prairie here is a tap land, I'm very happy to see it as we find a Sundown Pass. Opponent with a Ceremonial Knife though. So are we up against some brew, some combo deck that I'm not aware of? Because this is not a card you see often. If you know what they are up to, let me know. But yeah, let's just go for the hair. This may well be countered, but the two drop sacrificial pollen shield hair is what I'm gonna go with. So it does resolve, but there is some kind of stick here. Infernal Grasp, they lose two life for that one, okay. So they got they took two damage to take care of our 2-2. Not the end of the world. Right, so they're presenting a counter spell mana. What would I care about not getting countered? Um, countered? Let's go for the wedding announcement. It resolves, but if they'd countered that, I wouldn't have cared too much. And we can get a little bit of pressure going with this. So they didn't have a counter spell last turn, and again, they've just passed the turn. So let's go for our veteran here. And uh, the forge. Just going to attack with the forge only, because this is going to create a another 1-1, one -one, which is what we want. And why are they leaving mana open? I have no idea. 
because they haven't done too much. We're starting to build a nice little board going on here. Okay, malicious eclipse. All right, sure. They've got a board wipe, so they were just hoping we were going to play into their board wipe, but that's why I love this deck, and that's the reason I built this deck was to get around that. We're still going to create a 1-1 one, one this turn. We're still going to create a forge token, and no board wipe can deal with that. Looks like they have drawn a disruption protocol as they take care of our war leader's call, which is slightly annoying. But we're still hitting our opponent every single turn with a Phyrexian horror token. And next turn, potentially King Darien can pump it even more. They do have a Lord Skitter though. So Lord Skitter is the kind of card that you could play in the deck. Obviously it's black, but any creature that creates creatures is not something I'm particularly keen with, except for the Sanguine Evangelist. I think it's a fantastic card as it leaves behind a creature, which is pretty good against removal, and yeah. This is a lot of damage the opponent's having to deal with here. They're down to six. They have a Lord Skitter on the battlefield. We have a War Leader's Call now going. We're just going to start pinging them, and we also have our Restless Prairie on deck in our land there, so... We should be okay here. I can't think what they could have that could decimate our board that much. They're searching for something though, as they crack their blood token. And it's Pirate Hat. Okay, so they're up to some kind of brew. I am interested to know what they are doing. So if anyone knows, I would be interested because they are playing some cool cards. But we will attack the opponent with a Llama. A human and a Phyrexian horror and they go down to minus 11 and yeah, they're dead. Alright, on the play, we will certainly keep this hand. It is one of our better hands here. Could do with a Rebrest Forge. Haven't drawn that today as much as I'd been hoping for. It's one of my favourite cards ever getting a lot of play at the moment. Um, I'm going to play another deck this week with it in it. I'm going to rekindle another deck that I used to play with because I think the Forge is one of the best cards in Standard at the moment to get around the meta that we all seem to have to face. Opponent though on a Fairy Dream Thief, so I've got no idea what they're up to. They're holding open some kind of mana for something, but we do actually get to attack with the hair, which is nice. Get the opponent down to 18. And there's Gix, okay. All right, Gix is fine. It is a 3-3, so I'm probably gonna to wanna to play one of the Lord effect, or the um, Anthem effects here. Let's go for the War Leader's Call. We could attack here with the hair, but let's uh, hold it back to protect against Gix. Yeah, they have Candy Grapple. I think I'm, I don't know. Should I have attacked there? They were always going to have a removal spell, I think. Hmm, we'll see. Anyway, they get in there with their Dream Thief, and they go down to 16, but we're going to start pinging them with the Hive and War Leader's Call combo. And uh, let's go for King Darien. Let's save our tokens if we can. It also means we can attack with our 3-3 here. There's no way they block. And it looks like they're going to go down to 11. And a little board wipe here. We can just use King Darien to defend our creatures. Kind of with Sheldred. Okay. Sheldred and Gix with this flyer on the board is not a combo I want to be seeing. Because they are going to gain life. They're going to gain like three life a turn at the moment. Just with those cards. And they're back up to 12, okay. But we'll keep pinging the opponent with our War Leaders cause we find a second Forge. Alright, it's a shame I can't double spell here. And let's get in there with our 3-3s. Three so, could potentially take the opponent down to 9 if they don't block. And they do block. They go down to 4. So had we attacked earlier with the Hare, would they be on 1 now? Obviously, they would have a Candy Grapple still in their hand. Who knows? But they're back up to six. They got another Candy Grapple. Okay, well, I'm not going to save that with King Darien. Yeah, this is a close game. Massacre Girl is a nice little four drop for them. 
So they had a nice turn there. They dealt with one of my creatures and they dropped a 4-4. Four, four. They're gonna gain a life here with Gix and draw a card. So we need our, what's, our rats, I think. Rats would work. Rats would be lethal. We find a sundown pass. It does allow us to double spell here. And what does this do? They're on six life. We can attack with four creatures. They're on four life, aren't they? Because the war leader's call is going to ping them. So what, we can take them to one? I can't think of any other thing that we can do here. We take them to one, but then we would just take lethal back. Well, that's frustrating. So no attacks there. I guess we could have attacked with one of them there. They might have taken it and not realized that the wedding announcement would have pinged them for the last bit of damage. Anyway, life of Toshiro here, presumably to gain some life. Uh, yeah, they gained some life. They're back up to seven. So we've had them, we had them technically to one. We missed three damage right at the beginning. So this is a close one. And I think this is lethal, isn't it? Because we're going to die in our upkeep to Skrelv's Hive and their Shieldred. So yeah, this is why I don't like unblockable or creatures that don't block. This is my issue I have with the uh, Skrelv's Hive. And we didn't find our Lunar Veteran in this game, so I don't think we're going to win this one. But this one was mighty close. This was actually a good game against a mono black deck. Their little fairy dream thief put in a lot of work in that game as it um, worked quite nicely with the Gix to draw them some cards. They play an Evolved Sleeper, but yeah, we're going to die in our upkeep to Shieldred. There's nothing in our deck we can we have, and we, to be honest, we have no mana. Two player anyway. No cards in our hand, and we will draw ourselves to death. Well, there's, a, there's Case of the Gateway Express right at the end, but yeah, that was a close one. All right, on the play. No white mana, but this is a fantastic hand. To be honest, any land that allows us to play this Forge on turn three is such a strong play that, yeah, this is a good one. We'll, uh, we'll lead with the Copperline Gorge. Fingers crossed we find a land for the Forge. They play a Restless Anchorage. So, not sure what it's up against, but that would suggest a control game and thick it right on time allows us to drop this forge and we will smash our opponent down to 19 life so yeah I just want to hit land drops now going forward because our hand is sweet our hand is so nice opponent with seal from existence fair enough and deals with our forge so they better have many seal from existence in their deck because we've got a lot of cards coming at them this turn an evangelist it's a 2-1, it drops a 1-1 one, one as it ETBs, but when the Evangelist dies, you create another 1-1 one, one flyer. But the best thing about the Evangelist is it has Battle Cry. So for this particular reason, when we attack this turn, they are not going to be able to kill one of our attacking creatures here. We'll go for the Veteran, we'll go for King Darien. The only card I'm worried about here is land into some form. But we do have a Song of Tottentans in reserve to maybe sneak through a victory later on. Okay, it doesn't look like they have a Sunfall because they would have snapped that one off. A Depopulate. We would probably sack our King Darien, would we? I don't know. That would save the 2-2. Two -two. I guess we would obviously sack it because it would die anyway to depopulate, but opponent with a second wedding announcement there and they're going to make a couple of one ones we find a second copy of song okay so these one ones are kind of keeping them in the game a little bit but they're not very good blockers because they're not taking care of our creatures we'll play song here for x equals three gain three life back from the veteran smash our opponent they all get pumped by our power because of the battle cry of the evangelist and uh Let's see how they block, what they do. Next turn, we have a second copy of Song in our hand, so should be enough to take them out next turn. Okay, they go to one. One is not dead, though, and 
we have are gonna have a couple of wedding announcement triggers temporary lockdown okay well that's not good enough at all that's gonna keep a couple of our creatures in the battlefield it's kind of a weak removal spell I think um, it's very dependent on what is on the board but as you can see hasn't really worked for them in this instance because we're going to smash this song of Totten's hands unless they have a counter spell they could well be holding one back let's see we will do this for three it's gonna make three two two rats and we're all gonna have some battle cry triggers as well when we attack yeah opponent scoops it up instead 